Kubla Khan by Samuel Taylor Coleridge In Xanadu did Kubla Khan a stately pleasure dome decree, where Alf the sacred river ran through caverns measureless to man down to a sunless sea. So twice five miles of fertile ground with walls and towers were girdled round, and there were gardens bright with sinuous rills where blossomed many an incense-bearing tree, and here were forests ancient as the hills, enfolding sunny spots of greenery. But, oh, that deep romantic chasm which slanted down the green hill athwart a sedan cover, a savage place as holy and enchanted as e'er beneath a waning moon was haunted by woman wailing for her demon lover. And from this chasm, with ceaseless turmoil seething, as if this earth in fast thick pants were breathing, a mighty fountain momently was formed, amid whose swift half-intermittent bursts huge fragments vaulted like rebounding hail or chaffy grain beneath the thresher's flail. And mid these dancing rocks at once and ever it flung up momently the sacred river, five miles meandering with a mazy motion, through wood and dale the sacred river ran, then reached the caverns measureless to man, and sank in tumult to a lifeless ocean. Amid this tumult Kubla heard from far ancestral voices prophesying war, the shadow of the dome of pleasure floated midway on the waves, where was heard the mingled measure from the fountain and the caves. It was a miracle of rare device, a sunny pleasure dome with caves of ice. A damsel with a dulcimer in a vision once I saw, it was an Abyssinian maid, and on her dulcimer she played, singing of Mount Abora. I could revive within me her symphony and song, to such a deep delight would win me. That music loud and long, I would build that dome in air, that sunny dome, those caves of ice, and all who heard should see them there, and all should cry, Beware, beware! His flashing eyes, his floating hair, weave a circle round him thrice, and close your eyes with holy dread, for he on honeydew hath fed and drunk the milk of paradise. Okay, this is a poem by Samuel T uh, Taylor Coleridge. I think the main theme of this poem is creativity and um, the uh, difficulties and the wonders and how the creative process comes about. Let's see. Um, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, um, here, he's writing this poem. It's said that uh, he, he had taken opium and he was within an opium dream. And uh, he wrote this poem in his opium dream. And uh, he also says that he was uh, interrupted and couldn't remember the rest of it. But the poem's talking about a, a place of beauty, a place of wonder, a strange and also a fearful place, a place which is, mm, has all sorts of incredible elements. And this itself is an extended metaphor for the process of uh, creation. <coughs> 
So, in Xanadu did Kublai Khan a stately pleasure dome decree. So, Xanadu apparently was the summer palace of Kublai Khan, um, who I think was the grandson of Genghis Khan. And from this place, he ruled China. So, um, Kublai Khan said, we're going to build a stately pleasure dome, a wonderful place of pleasure, um, where Alf, the sacred river, ran through cavern, caverns measureless to man down to a sunset, sunless sea. So, so there, there are these huge caves which are so big that we can't measure them. And through the middle of these caves, there's running a sa the sacred river Alf, an imaginary river. And it, run it runs down to a sea where there is no sun. So twice five miles of fertile ground with walls and towers were girdled round. So there were 10 miles, a width of 10 miles, with walls and towers going all the way around it. They are girdled around. A girdle is something that you uh, wear to keep your stomach in. So they were surrounded by um, this uh, girdle of uh, walls and towers. And there were gardens bright with sinuous rills. A rill is a little stream, and sinuous it's winding backwards and forwards. So there were beautiful gardens and little streams flowing down to the river, where blossomed many an incense-bearing tree. So a tree bears fruit, yeah? So these tr there were trees, and these trees had a wonderful scent. And here were forests ancient as the hills. So there were forests, there were primeval forests, enfolding sunny spots of greenery. Okay, so I get the idea that there are little green spaces between the trees. But oh, that deep romantic chasm which slanted down the green hill athwart a seed arm cover. Okay, so this, this chasm, this huge cave, this huge hole, which had, uh, which had slopes going down to the river, and it ran athwart between um, cedar trees. Seed arm, this is a very old-fashioned word. Yeah, but it ran between cedar trees. Um, a savage, whoops, a savage place as holy and enchanted as air beneath a waning moon was haunted by a woman wailing for her demon lover. So, a savage place, this is a wild place, anything can happen here, yeah? And that's the point of um, uh, creativity, it's a place where anything can happen. Um, and it almost seems like this place is, this is a place that, um, might well be as air as ever. Yeah. As might be, um, uh, a place where beneath a moon that's getting smaller, the place was haunted by a woman crying for her demon lover. So it's the sort of place you might find a woman wailing for her, de crying for her demon lover. And from this chasm with ceaseless turmoil seething, as if this earth in fast thick pants were breathing, a mighty fountain momently was forced. So, in, in the middle of this chasm, or somewhere in this chasm, there was a huge fountain. Yeah, that was moving around, was seething with turmoil, with chaos. Yeah, and here we've got this uh, simile, as if the earth in fast, thick pants were breathing. So the, it's like the um, contents are coming out of this fa this um, uh, fountain. <laughs> So it's 
It's panting, yeah? It's like the earth were breathing in pants. Amid whose swift, half-intermittent burst, huge fragments vaulted like rebounding hail or chaffy grain beneath the thresher's flail. So, huge fragments. These are large pieces of rock, and they were thrown out of the fountain. Yeah, so these quick intermittent bursts, suddenly from time to time, there were bursts from this fountain, yeah, and they were thrown and they came down bouncing, rebounding like hail from the ground, or chaffy grain beneath the thresher's flail. So this is talking about when the harvest is made and they take a flail, it's a stick with a rope and another stick, and they bang the grain on the ground. And this is to separate the chaff, the skin, from the grains. And the grain is bouncing in the air. And this is the idea of these um, huge rocks coming out of the fountain, I would guess with water as well. And they are like hail, a hail, or, or like grain bouncing while it's being threshed. And amid these dancing rocks at once and ever, it flung up momently the sacred river. Okay, so I think as these rocks came down, some of them landed in the river, and they splashed the river. And then we start to talk about the river. Five miles meandering with a mazy motion, through wood and dale the sacred river ran. So the river flowed for five miles, meandering and mazy, winding backwards and forwards, and it goes through woods and open fields. Then the river reached the caverns, the place where the pleasure dome is, measureless to man. So maybe the this fountain of rocks and water is the uh, um, source of the river, and sank in tumult to a lifeless ocean. So at the very end, there's an ocean which seems dead. And I think that's the idea of after the creativity has finished. And maybe it's also um, referring to the possibility of uh, just not being able to think of anything and not feeling creative. And mid this tumult, Kubla heard from far ancestral voices prophesying war. And in the middle of all this chaos, Kublai Khan heard the voices of his ancestors saying that there was going to be war. The shadow of the dome of pleasure floated midway on the waves. So the pleasure dome is actually floating above the river or floating on the uh, above the river and the shadows are coming down onto the waves. Where was heard the mingled measure from the fountain and the caves? So here you could see hear the sound of the fountain and the caves. It was a miracle of rare device. It was a really incredible place. A sunny pleasure domes with caves of ice. So there were caves of ice in this place as well. A damsel with a dulcimer in a vision once I saw. So I saw um, a damsel, a young lady, playing a dulcimer. It's like a stringed instrument. It was an Abyssinian maid from Ethiopia, a young girl from Ethiopia. And on her dulcimer she played, singing of Mount Abora. So on this instrument she's playing a tune and singing about Mount Abora. Could I revive within me her symphony and song to such a deep delight would win me? Um, if I could uh, remember exactly the tune and the song, it would really, really make me happy. That music loud and long, 
I would build that dome in the air, that sunny dome, those caves of ice. So if I could do it, but this is the problem. The uh, He can't do it. He can't make this. He's doing this all in his imagination, but he can't make it real. And this is the idea of the creative process, is making these things real, creating a work of art. Well, he really has, because uh, he's written this poem about it. So, if I could, I would build that dome in the air, yeah, the, the caves of ice, and I would recreate that music. And all who heard should see them there, and all should cry, beware, beware. And everyone who could see them would shout, be careful, be careful. His flashing eyes, his floating hair, weave a circle round him thrice. So I think this is now talking about Kublai Khan, the creator of this place. And they're saying, be careful, this man is really powerful, he can do anything to you. Yeah, and... Uh, if I could create it, I would. you would be able to see Kublai Khan, his eyes flashing, his hair floating, and then make a circle around him, make three circles around him, and close your eyes with holy dread, with fear, with fear of, uh, of, God, of the gods or God. For he hath on honeyed youth, sorry, for he on honeydew hath fed. So he's um, drunk honeydew. Honeydew is the nectar that in flowers that the bees take and drunk the milk of paradise. So he knows what paradise is. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the video, give it a rating, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you soon. So bye for now. Kubla Khan by Samuel Taylor Coleridge.